originating from Russia, the same group behind the huge solar wind attack that targeted the Departments of Homeland Security, Energy, Commerce, Defense, Treasury, and State, and thousands of America's businesses. Plants in the U.S. and Canada are slowly coming back online, including this plant in Brooks, Alberta, that supplies one quarter of Canada's beef. After a ransomware attack on JBS, the world's largest meat producer, brought production to a standstill. The attack is believed to have been launched by a group of Russian hackers, similar to the one that caused the shutdown of a major U.S. pipeline. If Russia continues to interfere with our democracy, I'm prepared to take further actions to respond. I believe Russian hackers are behind another major campaign against U.S. government agencies, non-governmental organizations, and think tanks. Uh, there's the solar winds hack, there's election interference, and quite frankly, there's ongoing cyber rivalry, cyber espionage. You know, some of it's not going to end. The president announcing sanctions on Russia for the solar winds attack and election interference. That attack eventually linked by U.S. authorities to Russian intelligence. When Russia seeks to violate the interests of the United States. We will respond. We'll always stand in defense of our country, our institutions, our people and our allies. There was engagement in our elections that I would I respond. As we learn more about the solar wind cyber intrusion, I made clear that I would respond once we determined who had, in fact, conducted a hack on the scope and scale that occurred. I told them that we would shortly be responding in a measured and a proportionate way because we concluded that they had interfered in the election and solar winds was totally out of the uh, inappropriate. So I think they went to one of the many covert weapons in their playbook microwave heaters which they easily use to create and modify their own weather. Large scale modification to create, make and steer severe storms. They just bam these rays into the ionosphere, different microwaves, different radiations, programs all over the world, especially the main facility harp in Alaska. The facility was built by the Air Force about 20 years ago. It's important for a lot of things. Bubbles, we can heat small sections. We can create waves. We can, we can excite uh, plasma resonances. Could it have gone further? But I chose not to do so. Could it have gone further? But I chose not to do so. Russian hackers have hit the U.S. government again. This morning, a far-reaching attack from Russia. Hackers from the Russian-based group Nobelium infiltrated an email system used by the State Department's Agency for International Development, targeting organizations doing human rights and humanitarian work three weeks before the meeting between Presidents Biden and Putin. Russian President Vladimir Putin says relations with the U.S. are at an extremely low point. <laughs> Well, let me make it clear. I think he's right. It's a low point that uh, I was going to find out whether or not he, in fact, did engage in trying to interfere in our election, that I was going to take a look at whether he was involved in the, the uh, um, uh, a cybersecurity breach that occurred, et cetera. And if I did, I was going to respond. 
I did. I checked it out. So I had access to all the intelligence. He was engaged in those activities. I did respond and made it clear that I'd respond again. Consider he's possibly laughing because he obviously knows relations are at an all-time low because of the weather or the storm or the response he sent and now his second response which goes back to some of the oldest yet most upgraded technology using UAVs in this case on inhibited aerospace vehicles those vehicles would begin cloud seeding and producing severe thunderstorms that they easily put over their target and steer any way they want, modify, make them intense. Oh, my God. 